Building this 1970 Dodge Charger to be a mid-engine corner carving machine has opened up, at least for me, a world of tools and the opportunity to build the skills to use them. Now this time I'm tackling what has got to be the most difficult sheet metal project I've ever attempted as I further modify this cowl and shape a new panel from scratch. But first, I have to destroy in order to create. Hey y'all, I've got the engine in this car set so far back. It's a little bit over 12 inches and it's set so far back, I actually can't take the intake off with the engine in the car. The cowls on these Mopars are really tall and thick. They're, they used to be sort of structural. I made this really nice looking piece that had a wonderful profile. That didn't work anymore. Here is kind of what I'm talking about. This whole profile that I've cut nice and evenly, the wiper motor for the windshield used to sit right here and the, the opening was really pretty small. That's, that's how that thing was formed. In this case, I widened the opening. Now I need to compress this. I need to get a little bit more clearance right here. I wanna strike that magical spot between something that is very clearly custom and at the same time can sort of disappear into the background for just the casual passerby. Look, you will hear me say it a few times where like, I really don't know what I should do next, but I do know what I can do. And in this case, I had to cut out the lower cowl. I knew that, but took a minute to shape up this strip of 18 gauge to capture what I call the as is profile so that I can have it as a reference for later. Now, in terms of creating references, there is one tool I have never had the chance to use until now. Uh, friends are here, and we are going to scan the car into the computer, lawnmower man style. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, so when we're done here, we'll have a data cloud, yep. point cloud, and then hopefully Dave DeMoyes will move that into yes. Fusion or Inventor. And then you have your build out envelope, and you can literally design anything you want into it, give that all to Igor, and he can just put it in his magic machine. Yeah, yeah. It'll do laser things. Freaking laser. I imagine like the file going into Igor's machine going beep, bop, boop. Like the savings on time is incredible and the precision should be exact to the car. So, big day, fun. big yeah. day. Uh, step one, we gotta put on these little dots. The model of the car is filed in my buddy's very powerful modeling computer, like way more than the computer that I use to make these videos. And we will come back to it when it is time to bend and roll tubing. Meanwhile, uh, a couple of tools have arrived that are going to really help me shape this engine cowl. Darnell, you're gonna be very happy. This makes no noise. No uh, grinding sounds. And this will cut all the stuff that is actually pretty thick up to about eighth inch. So, you know, fingers, toes, and eighth inch steel. Unfortunately, sweetie, this one is not quiet. Mm. Sorry, darling, can't win them all. So I've got to build this cowl to give a little bit of clearance for where the, uh, for the engine and, and is gonna sit and I gotta create a bump in the cowl and all that sort of stuff. 18 gauge is a little bit thick for this, although really, really structural. So I favor something more like 19 or 20. 19 is hard to find. Uh, it's very automotive common, but it's hard to find it like the metal shop, unless you happen to have hung on to a piece 
from your Chevy hood all these years ago. I've been hanging on to two of these things from where I did the louvers on my Suburban for just this special occasion. I've, I've wanted to put a little bit of the Suburban in the charger for a while now, and I finally got a chance. I'm wanting to be able to basically go from this plane all the way backwards and then taper down to here, leaving enough room for the uh, for this part of the, the windshield wiper to poke up and through. This is exactly in line with the where the it pokes through on the upper cowl. And then I think that I can go to here and then taper backward, kind of following this sort of shape here. And so if you just imagine this, right, this pushed out all the way to the corners, that's kind of the shape that I'm going for, so that it still has a little bit of a factory vibe to it. And it just needs to be flattened down. And I'll figure out what to do over here. But I'm basically gonna have to create a flat piece, an angle, and then some sides, because I'm just not quite skilled enough to make this out of one sheet of metal. Uh, it would normally be stamped or whatever, but it's just gonna be me and the Beverly Shear, the English wheel, and the new planishing hammer. just a ballpark right this is how it's gonna sit it's a little tall uh, this is gonna be in the same plane as this here right that's how this will all uh, come together and there's a little bit of an angle here and of course I've got to you know build out these sides which I now have two more of these bent to the exact same amount as this and you can see I'm gonna kind of cut out the 90 here and here but I figured out what I'm gonna do is probably miter this and put it in place and have a little bit of a, not quite a 90, a little bit less, maybe, a, you know, 85 degrees, something like that to open up more toward the front. Uh, so that this comes in, tapers and goes around like that. And then I can take that to the planishing hammer and round those corners. Getting the miters cut correctly means making the angle from the top view only. And when I do this, I like to use a thin piece of tape to set and mark the cuts. instantly do one of the hardest welds, at least for me, which is thin sheet metal TIG and on an open corner. And uh, I don't know, there's something about like just taking a break that helped my brain reset. It's all welded, I'm letting it cool uh, just so that my abrasives don't die. And I'm gonna show you how we fit it on there. One of the things that, I've got this sharp corner here and I wanted to be able to, I wanna be able to round this, make it look like it's an original stamped part. I'll just say, not knowing exactly how to do this, I sort of played around with this and I made a test piece to practice the process of making this corner. And so I made the sharp corner, but blended it down the way you normally would, and then ran it through the planishing hammer with a high crown die. And I overdid this one a little bit, but it, I proved the point that I can round this corner. And that's just something that I do instead of testing it on the final piece, I'll make little practice bits like this. Truth be told, this is a piece of scrap that I just screwed up, but I don't throw it away, hang on to it, and do some testing with it. But take a quick look as to how this is gonna go. In fact, come here. Here's about what I have in mind. And you're just gonna have to use your imagination a little bit because I gotta trim all this stuff and I still gotta radius that in the back. But that's kind of what we're going for. Clearance right in here for that high intake on that engine over there.
first of all, sorry, the fans are on. It's a bunch of noise, but it is hot already here in, in uh, Texas. And this is, this should be about the last weekend where I don't run, uh, where I just run with it hot, because I've got, see, that guy right there, new air conditioner. Uh, he'll be wired up and, and hooked up this, uh, this week, and then we'll be, you know, at least a little bit cooler next time. But anyway, uh, welding all of this, you can saw the way that I do it is I do about seven or eight dabs at a time. And going seven or eight dabs, that's what all these little individual spacers are. That's the gas coverage from the paws. And you can see a little bit, I did take a break here from a little bit too much heat into the work. But generally, I go in a straight line, and here's what I'm looking for, is good solid penetration all the way through to the back. This will all blend real nicely, but as you can see, there's deformation here at the welds. The material is shrinking here on the top, drawing these two parts together. And, you know, what's, what's kind of interesting about it is you can fix all of that, right? This is, metal is clay, right? You can take that out with a little bit of planishing hammer and a little bit of English wheel. Blending welded seams is a multi-step process, and honestly, it could be a video all on its own, uh, but felt sort of like a detour for this one. And I'll just say, comment if you really wanna see that stuff in a separate video, I will happily go through my entire process. anything like that before so just trying to go back to like some basic principles to make sure that I understand what the metal is telling me at any given time mostly what I ended up doing was you know welding these things together planishing and, and doing like normal weld seam blending and then using a combination of the English wheel and the planishing hammer and then the planishing hammer with the soft upper die to make sure that these seams could be blended relatively flat there's a very slight crown in this little guy, but it's flat up at the front. I did a little bit of the shrinker stretcher, shrinker specifically, to make sure that the seams ended up staying straight. There's a lot of stress in this part. And then it looks like it was stamped from the factory. That's the look that I was going for, is like, if you can imagine a die coming down and pressing this steel together. Now, what I've got to do is integrate it into the rest of the car. Ah! This is, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I nearly just slipped over a hose. I've got to clean this whole place up. So you guys can see. Fits real nicely. And it's just ultra rough while I'm holding the camera in one hand. So you can see where that's gonna go. Obviously I will trim this. And, you know, my next steps generally are to start integrate this into the lower cowl and then making sure that the upper cowl fits as well. You know that I'm done because I've got every single tool out. It seems like every tool in my arsenal is out and on the table and I literally just nearly tripped on a, on a hose and fell and that would have been too bad. So this is that point where I have to take a minute and clean things up because at least for me, like my mind space reflects my workspace and this is a small space and I gotta keep it nice and neat and organized and relatively clean. So give me just a second. Whenever I make custom stuff like this, I fit the panel dozens of times, over and over and over. At every point something has changed, it all gets fit and reassembled. And here's the other piece. I generally try to avoid making more than one adjustment at a time. It keeps it all kind of straight in my mind anyway. I've got this kind of mocked up in here, and basically this cowl structure, it's like a reverse you know, hood scoop of sorts, right? So that I can actually get a hand in here and remove the intake. And as the engine sits back in here, there was actually like just a little bit of contact area between everything. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I know what my next step is, which is pull it off, fit, mark, trim, just keep on going until these things sort of fit together. So that's what I'm gonna try my hand at next. It's a slow process, but I actually really enjoy this stuff.
dude, we could seriously do videos with the dogs all day. Take a look, we got all kinds of clearance in here. The cowl in here is trimmed and like roughly fit. I've got to do a whole bunch more finish fitting, right? But I'm not going to torture you guys with that. I just want you to see, I can get a hand in here and I can get a tool on it. And this intake will come up and out. And that's really the whole thing that we wanted. So we able to service this in the car without removing the engine. I know it seems like it might be handy. What we traded out to was the original shape that's made to drain water, because that's what happens when water comes through the air intake grate. 12 separate pieces of material formed, welded, and blended to make one. And look, y'all know progress on this car does not come easily or quickly. And there's a useful quote that I think applies here, which is, the person who loves walking will walk farther than the person who loves only the destination. Just know that we will get where we're going in due time. But two things are happening next. One, air conditioner, then we're gonna mess with transmission and drive shaft. But right at this very moment, Rhett and I, we're gonna have a beer. Thank y'all for watching. Until next time, take care, okay?